Okay, now let's do something really cool. I'm going to gain match the unmastered version and the mastered version so you don't hear a volume increase and you can hear what it's actually doing to the sound. In this series, I'm showing every step to how I took my old mix that sounds like this and transformed it into this. So over a year ago, I released this song and now I wanted to improve on this older mix with how I mix today. This is actually the last video in this video series where we'll do mastering pop punk. If you want to go back and see how the whole mix was done, I'll link to that in the description. So this here is my mastering chain and a version of this will go on most things that I do. And interestingly, if you want to hear the mix without the master, it sounds like this. Obviously it's louder because it's a master, but there were a lot of differences in the sonic quality too. Let's, let's break it down. The first thing I run it through is this linear multiband compressor from Waves. I don't touch any of the bands. This is how it opens up. I just bring the threshold down until it starts to affect the sound. And then I might tinker with each band to make sure that it is actually controlling each frequency. And then our tiny bit here on the range, I've got it set to minus six. So it's not doing that much, but off and on is quite drastic. Let me show you. It just creates this smooth, polished sound straight from the off with the, before we've done anything else. And that's what I love about a linear phase multiband compression. Next, we're going into EQ. And all we're doing here is monoing out. So obviously the mix is in stereo. So we're turning everything mono below a certain frequency. So I've got the Fab Filter Pro Q3. It's a very expensive way of doing this very simple thing. There are free plugins out there, I'm sure. All we're doing is turning everything below a certain frequency into mono. So what I'll do is I'll play it and I'll slide the frequency around until I feel like the very the sub and the low end is below that below where I've got it set. Let me show you. It works out to be about there any higher and I think I'm starting to lose the width of the guitars because the low end of the guitars are starting to get sucked into that like mono vortex. When the speakers are producing the low end, they are doing it in mono. So every push and pull of that speaker is going to be completely in sync. There's not going to be any phase issues or there, there is if you haven't mixed it right, but you're going to make sure that that low end punch is synonymous across the uh, left and right speaker. Now this is the first sort of like full impact plugin. You may have seen it if you watch my other videos and that is the STL Control Hub. And I'm using the Will Putney pack. So this, is, this isn't cheap and the packs you have to buy as well, but it's so worth it as you'll hear in a minute when I turn it on. And what I've got here is I'm rolling off some of the proper low end, like 30 Hertz. And then I'll move these two, this green and blue one around. It'll be the sub of the kick and it'll be the sub of the bass. And this plugin has a tendency to sort of blow it all up. So I try and just bring that down before it hits the plugin. It's, as you can see, it's on the pre setting here. So that, that doesn't go into all the compression and stuff like that. And then I'll bring the limiter over here. I bring it down to to where it's sitting nicely and the last thing to look at here is it's the dynamics bit and um, the threshold sometimes you'll turn it onto a mix and it's slamming it like crazy so you want to bring the threshold back so it's not sounding too overly compressed but it is a master and it is pop punk so that compressed glued together sound is what you're what you're after but this is just so good how it emulates will putney's um, mastering chain it goes through this color bit here which is sort of emulating his hardware and his desk so let's hear what this does It just breathes that life into it. It does make your song brighter. I haven't pushed anything in it. It's just going through this and the compression and stuff. It does start to feel like it shifts the frequency balance slightly up into that bit, but it's great for hitting that sort of aggressive part of the frequency range and it doesn't sound too harsh. If it does, you can always, with this orange one up here, I, I'll nip out some harshness if it, if it does start to get harsh. I'll show you off and on. Try and listen past the obvious volume difference and you'll see it sort of injects some magic into it. Yeah, I just love it. 
So after that, I sort of finish it off with Maximizer, which is not straight up limiting because it's a, it's not going to kill your transients like a limiter would. This is where I start to bring up my level meter here, set it to RMS. This is just the stock one from Logic and I want to hit, I've got this line here set to minus eight RMS because I'm a little bit old school and that was what everyone used to hit back in the day. Yes, your music is going to get turned down on streaming services, but I know that minus eight is going to give me the right amount of compression, limiting, saturation that comes with all of that processing. And I know that as long as I'm hitting that, it's going to be loud enough so that when it gets turned down, it's as loud as everything else. When I used to master to uh, minus 14 LUFS and things like that, sometimes it would sound a little bit soft and a little bit, not quieter as such, but less glued because I wasn't hitting it as hard through all of the, the plugins and stuff. So let's bring in the maximizer from Ozone 8. This maximizer still exists in the light version, which is a lot, which I think I actually got for free. This is the full version. And I bring this threshold down. I always set it to IRC1 because that has the most edge to it. If you want a sort of softer, more natural one, you're looking at four, or uh, three or four and then set to balanced or modern or something like that. Stereo independence. This means that if the left or right speaker, let's say there's a tom fill or something's happening, it won't pull both speakers down. It will allow one to up to 19%. Not sure why it's not 20%. Up to, up to 19%, it will uh, allow for that. And then this transient emphasis is amazing, but it can ruin it. It's just allowing, it's sort of preserving your transients, basically. It's not doing what a traditional limiter would do and just squashing those down. So let's have a look. So yeah, you can see sitting there at minus 8.1. It's got that aggression. It's got that glue. Nothing's jumping out because we've we've limited it and compressed it in, in what I think is a cool way. And we can quickly AB this ozone maximizer so you can really hear what's happening. And at this point, I will listen to reference mixes, which I won't put in here because I'll get uh, copyright strikes. And I'll make sure that it's not as it's not too squashed or more distorted than other tracks and make sure that you've got enough low end and that kind of thing. So this here, Rezo, it's sort of like an AI plugin in a way. You can let it run. It will decide where it thinks all your resonant frequencies are happening. It will populate these little pluses for you and then it will dynamically affect them. It's kind of similar to Soothe where it will do it proportionate to how much is happening in that frequency. So I'll set it to run here where you can calculate targets. It will pick what it wants to do and then you can engage it and, and it and it really does take off the edge that the ozone and the STL control hub give it. It's a nice sort of smoothing of that. Let's hear that. So you can see it's only just nipping those bits of harshness out when it needs to. So it keeps, it's very transparent and I, I really, really like it. And then with all that, as you can see, if you look down here, we actually have clipped. So what I do is I do a safety limiter right right at the end. This is the vintage limiter from Ozone, but just any limiter would be fine because I'm not even doing anything. I'm literally just setting it to zero so it does not go above threshold. <laughs> You don't even hear that it's on. And just quickly, if you make music like this and you want me to mix your next release, then head over to my website, terrybeckleyrecording.com, fill out the contact form, and I will get back to you. Okay, now let's do something really cool. I'm going to gain match the unmastered version and the mastered version so you don't hear a volume increase and you can hear what it's actually doing to the sound. It's obviously, pushing it this loud, putting it through all that, it's going to affect your quality and it's not going to be such a pure sound like your mix is. So do you want to hear how detrimental mastering can be, if at all, or if it's safe to do it like this? Let's find out. So when it's set to original, that is going to be the mix with no mastering. And when I set it to reference, that's going to be the mastered version. And I've got it set here to level match. Okay, let's start with the unmastered version. So that is a really good indication of actually the mastering sounded great. I don't think it killed anything. It glued it. The frequency balance is smoother. It's more present. It's more 
aggressive. And I'm really impressed with that. And if you want to grab these multi-tracks, follow the videos, mix along and master along, then you can grab them from my Shopify store, which I'll link in the description or through YouTube shopping as it should be there as well. And if you want to see more videos like this, then check out my channel because I'm always doing pop punk and emo and similar tutorials like that. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you at the next one.